in the art world, there's something called the rule of thirds. Now, most boffins attribute this to Leonardo da Vinci. It's also known as the divine principle, and it's based on a series of Fibonacci numbers. And thanks to uh, this man's bestseller, we all know all about that. It's about dividing a painting or a photograph, or in our case, an on-screen image, into a series of thirds, horizontally and vertically. Now I can demonstrate this with one of my own paintings so we don't have any copyright issues. So uh, this is about one of the smallest ones I've got. Most of my canvases are absolutely huge, but you can see in, in terms of the, the kind of background and the horizon, it's roughly divided up into thirds and then there are important bits like the trees and the birds which are placed along where the thirds and the vertical points cross and for some reason these are the points of an image that our eyes are most often drawn to. So now you know about the rule of thirds, you can have a lot of fun looking at paintings and photographs, seeing who's used the rule of thirds and how they've used it. And who knows, you may even choose to take your own photographs differently. For us, because we want to frame ourselves center stage in the manner of a television presenter or a chat show host, it's enough that we get the eyes positioned on or just above the top third. Distance is important too. Too close and your face will be distorted and you'll kind of balloon into the lens. Too far away and you'll appear shrunken and diminished and the background will take on much more importance and prominence. So you need to frame from about chest upwards to just above the top of your head, give yourself just a little bit of breathing space. And uh, I think that looks pretty good for my framing. Now, after that short art lesson, you probably think you've cracked it. I say no. The angle of your camera or device is also really important as well. Too high and with the camera tilted down, you're going to look a little bit like an ant under a microscope. Too low and with the screen tilted upwards, you're going to loom frighteningly in the screen. So unless you want to make a horror movie, don't do that. It's not enough just to tilt the screen. You need to physically lift up the camera, the device, so it's at your eye level. Now, I think that's about right. And I can't just sit holding it. So I'm going to need to prop it up on something. Right, that's better. I'm using a jewelry box, but you can use a pile of books. Encyclopedia Britannica, great use for that. Now, just to point out that I have gone from Goldilocks to Fibonacci in two short episodes. So I think I need a brownie point for that. So lots of things to mess around with before next week when we will be taking one small step into the giant world of sound.